One Harvard study shows that if you reduce the inventory, the clutter in your house, you can reduce house cleaning by 40%. Currently, the average chore time is two hours and 42 minutes per day. But to make it even more interesting, by decluttering your space, you reduce cleaning time by seven hours a week. If you can get rid of inventory, you can still have a clean house and not spend all the time cleaning. You basically get it all. I listened to a podcast by Katie Wells, who is a decluttering expert, and it was on five ways that you can spend less time cleaning. I wanna share some of her thoughts and then some of my thoughts with you on how you can do this. One of the problems she mentions that I totally agree with is that we're thinking, well, decluttering takes time away from cleaning. So I don't have time to clean and declutter. But remember, the more clutter you have, the harder your chores become. They just get so much harder when you're working around clutter. The solution to this is to declutter while you do chores. While you're folding laundry, look for things with holes. Look for things that the kids have maybe outgrown just a little bit and you can pass those items on. When you're coming into the house, into the entryway, and you're putting your shoes away, you're putting your purse away, check for shoes that are outgrown or that have holes in them. Check for coats in the coat closet. I feel like we tend to put decluttering into a totally separate category from chores. Chores are like our ritual, our daily tasks, our habit, but then decluttering feels more like a project and it definitely can be if you wanna block out time for it, but it can become a task, a daily ritual, just like a chore, which means you can get into the habit of doing it and it just becomes part of your daily rhythm and it doesn't feel so hard. I asked you on Instagram, what is the chore that you resent the most? For me, it's like cleaning out the fridge. <laughs> I absolutely despise this job, but some of the other ones you guys said were cleaning the shower. The bathroom came up a lot, actually. But my suggestion would be, since these chores have to be done, is to hyper-focus on the areas that you really, really dislike as far as chores go and declutter those first or declutter those the most so that you don't have to spend as much time. If you hate cleaning the playroom, you absolutely loathe it. Get rid of a large amount of toys in there. Really hyper-focus on this area because this is your pain point. It's the area that makes you the most uncomfortable and that you dread the most. Make this easier on yourself by decluttering the most. Something else that Katie Wells mentions is setting a time limit for tasks that you really don't like to do. This could be as simple as an evening reset. It's not super fun to do a bunch of cleaning in the evening, especially when you're tired. But if you set the timer for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then get your family on board, it's amazing how we suddenly go into like, she called it ninja mode when we're racing the clock. Suddenly it feels like there's a stopping point and I have to go as fast as I can to get as much done as possible in this allotted time. And it really supercharges your cleaning session. And it's amazing amazing how little time some tasks take compared to what we've built it up in our heads. Sometimes we feel like doing the dishes takes 10 minutes when in reality it only takes three. So you can time the actual chore itself to kind of put things into perspective as well. And then when you're setting the timer, let's say for an evening reset as the example, focus on the most important things first. For me, waking up to a sink completely clean is the most important along with taking out the garbage. So kind of prioritize as you're racing the clock. That way, if the rest of it doesn't happen to get done, at least the most important things are done and you know that you can count on tomorrow walking into that kitchen with no dishes. I think we often feel like in order to be doing a good job, to be productive, we have to do it all. This is part of our culture. This is something I actually fight against. I don't believe you have to do it all to be productive. I don't believe you have to do it all to feel like you've accomplished something in your day, your week, or even your life. So try and shift your perspective and realize you do not have to get it all done. What are some things that you can actually skip? For example, I don't make my bed every day. Do you? I feel like this is something that just, it 
isn't worth it to me. It didn't make a big difference in my life. So I skip this. Are you able to do laundry every other day? If you hate laundry, can you cut back a little bit and only do it every other day instead of sweeping the entire kitchen floor, especially if this is a pain point chore for you? Can you just spot sweep throughout the day? Can you spot mop? How can you kind of cut corners and actually get away with doing literally less than what you feel like you need to do? I promise, even by doing less, cutting back, not doing things every day, you are still accomplishing a whole lot and you are still productive. I wanna share another tip. Identify, again, those pain point chores or identify the chores that you find you're doing a lot. Maybe it's not something that you actually hate, but it's just something that you're spending a lot of time doing. I have a couple suggestions. I hated mopping, just like cleaning out the fridge. So I invested in a steam mop. For some reason, it makes the job easier for me. If you hate doing dishes or if you're spending a lot of time doing dishes, maybe invest in plastic dishes and have your kids do them. So think about ways that you can really, really make these jobs more enjoyable or how can you easily pass them off to other members of your family? Something that I've done is I've made sure to set up my kitchen such that where I put the dishes away is directly across from the dishwasher. I'm not walking across the kitchen to put away the bowls and the plates and the silverware. I have set it up so that I can do one motion and put away 90% of what's in the dishwasher. A lot of you mentioned the shower, like I said in that Instagram poll. And I have to say, you know, they make shower sprays that kind of do the work for you. You spray things down with the shower spray. Here's one that I really love. You start with the clean shower and then you can actually maintain the cleanliness of the shower for quite a while just by spritzing it down a couple times a week. It's amazing that these products will actually do some cleaning or do the work for you. You just have to know that they exist and they do. And then again, if it's a chore you absolutely hate, like the bathroom, set the timer for 10 minutes and go full ninja style. Next, identify the chores that you can do in your home that you can do the most quickly that will still have a positive impact on your day, will still help you feel like you have things under control, that you live in a clean space, and that everything is running smoothly. This can be really, really helpful, especially if you feel like your house is out of control and you don't know where to start, you don't feel like you have a lot of motivation to clean, or again, a lot of time. So here are a few examples. Come up with a 30 second plan for the main areas of your home. The kitchen is a main area. 30 seconds or less, pull the moldy food out of the pantry. This is so incredibly fast and it will make making dinner, it will make your next grocery run so much easier. Wiping down the countertops takes a few seconds. Again, a spot sweep and a spot mop only take about 20 seconds. Relocating items out of the kitchen into another place in the house is a very important step. I feel like a lot of times we feel like our house is a complete mess because things are not where they belong. So spend a few seconds relocating items from the kitchen. For the bedroom, a few tasks that you can do very, very quickly are just pick up the clothes off the floor. If you're not gonna make your bed, I actually, I don't make my bed every day, but I will pull the comforter up over the bed and it feels kind of made. <laughs> it's like halfway made. And I don't consider that, you know, laziness. I just consider that knowing my priorities. And then vacuuming. Vacuuming is so, so quick and can really freshen up a space. Another one of the main complaints you share with me on Instagram is having your work undone by other members of the family. I hear you, this can be so incredibly frustrating. I want you to remember again, that you're gonna reduce the inventory in your home. You are going to make it so that less messes can be made. And when messes are made, there's so many fewer items that you actually have to clean up. So remember that, but also remember that 
even the tiniest kids can help with cleaning. Let's talk about older kids. I really like the idea of doing a popsicle stick pull. So put different chores that need to be done every single day and prioritize these trashes, laundry, dishes, and then have each child either pull one, two, however many you want from the jar. This helps them feel like it's not unfair. It keeps things kind of exciting and not so monotonous and they don't feel like they have to do the same thing every single day and get kind of burned out it's kind of like a game so I really really like this and then talk to your spouse let them know or your partner whoever it is let them know that you need their help and figure out a system that will work for the two of you another thing you can do if you don't want to do the popsicle sticks is sticky notes write chores down on a sticky note and maybe write down how long you think it's gonna take so a five minute a few five minute chores a few ten minute chores and have them pick a five and a ten and do the chore for that day. So you can make this fun maybe on a weekend or something. I think just calling it the sticky pick is gonna make it funny. And then encouraging your kids and helping to motivate them to decluttering their stuff as well can be so beneficial. It benefits you, it benefits the entire family and remind them, it benefits them as well. Again, it's less for them to manage, less for them to clean. I heard, I think it was on Instagram about doing a garage sale with your kids. You are buying the items. If you don't want to make actual money the incentive you can make little coupon cards that you can exchange for the items in the children's bedrooms especially if it's something they're having a little bit of a harder time parting with but you know in the long run they will not miss maybe incentivize that by letting them stay up an extra 30 minutes that night with mom and dad I've got one more thing I want to share for you, and that is to come up with a 30 minute speed, whole house speed clean for yourself so that you know, I've got this under control. Things feel completely chaotic. I don't know where to start. I don't have a lot of energy, don't have a lot of time, and I'm not motivated. You can still clean your entire house in 30 minutes and you know that. That's encouraging, that is motivating. So I'm gonna break down what I think would be a great 30 minute routine. Get your machines running. So start your dishwasher, even if this means you have to spend a couple minutes or seconds loading it, and then start the washer. Get your machines going going. The, this way it helps you realize the work's already being done and you're feeling like things are happening and it's just a lot easier to continue forward. Hit up your kitchen, focus on the counters, the floors, and the trash. In the living room, fluff the pillows, rearrange the cushions if you need to, put away the throw blankets, and do a tidy and a vacuum. For the bathroom, this is just like the 30 second clean. You're going to do mirrors, counters, toilets, and replace the hand towel. So I have a loft. I'm gonna include this in my personal whole house 30 minute routine. Carry a basket with you. This will make it even easier. Anything that needs to be relocated just goes into the basket and at the very, very end, once you've done all the other rooms and all the other quick little tasks, you're gonna spend five to 10 minutes putting everything away. And then I wanna encourage you to embrace a good enough home. Do not strive for perfection. It's a race you cannot win. You can never have the perfect home and no one else does. I promise you. You might feel like other people's homes are perfect. <laughs> Why can't I have my house like someone else's house? I promise you, you're seeing the very best then. You're not seeing them in their worst moments because no one's house is perfect. Everybody has their own struggles with housework and chores. Here's a playlist for you if you're interested in more tips and tricks on simple living, minimizing, and having a clutter-free space. I'll see you over there.